What we have seen so far is a quadratic algorithm used in something called vectoring mode. Now, we'll talk about some of these terms whenever we go through a video on the history of the quadratic algorithm, but for the moment we just accept that it's called vectoring mode. Now, in vectoring mode, we've seen that what we do is we minimise a value. Now, in the case that we looked at, we minimised the y value, and then we used that in order to find an angle theta. So, this is vectoring mode. Now, the algorithm we had is recreated down here. So this is just the same algorithm that we derived and we looked at an example in over the last couple of videos. Now what we really want to do is to try and simplify and standardize all of our equations. And that's what we're going to do here. So we have three columns here. In the first column, we have the quadratic algorithm. Now we'll talk through this in just a moment. In the second column, we would have an initialization. So these are the values that we would initially put into the algorithm before we run it. Now, after we have run the algorithm with this initialization, we're going to get particular outputs. And these are our outputs here. So this is the way we want to try and think about it from now on. We'll have a fixed algorithm which we know and understand. And then what we do is we just change the initialization values. And these changes of the initialization values will change the output for us. So let's talk through each of these columns individually. So we have the quartic algorithm in vectoring mode here. And this ostensibly is just what we have above. We're going to have the value xi plus 1 is equal to xi minus yi di 2 to the minus i. And this is us just multiplying out this matrix here. So we've got 1 here times the xi, and then we've got the minus, and it's di, yi di 2 to the minus i. There should actually be a little i in here in this algorithm and a little i in there just after the d. So this is quite straightforward. We just multiplied out the algorithm at the matrix. And again, we multiply out the matrix for the y value. So you'll have seen these before. And then we've just rewritten this here, but we've simplified it a little bit. I've got rid of the e to the i, and I've just placed this actual value in for it. So we've got this written here. So the algorithm is really just these three lines. And then the fourth line is just the test and the, the, the test to see whether the y value is greater than or less than zero. And then we place the plus or minus one in for the di. So this is the quartic algorithm in vectoring mode. And you'll note here we don't have any mention of k. So we're just leaving the k out here. We just accept this as the quartic algorithm. So the final value that we get out will be scaled. Now, this is the initialization for the algorithm that we used over the last couple of videos. We had the value for x0 is just our x in, and the y0 is our y in. So the x0 and y0, in these cases here, the x and y in are just the position on the circle for the point. So if in our example there we had uh, 0.866, 0.5. Okay, so these are our x0 and y0 and they're just the input values. We also said as well that we started off with a, the first value for our angle is actually a value of zero. So Z naught is a value of zero. So this is our initialization. And the final column is the output. So these are the values after we've ran through all of the iterations. So you can see here that it's Xn, Yn, Zn, and there's a value An here as well. Now remember that whenever we ran through the iterations here, we ran from i is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 
and it went all the way up to some value n. Now in our instance here, the example we did, we had nine iterations, so that meant that n would actually go up to a value of eight. So let's look at the individual outputs here, and there's some of them that we already know of. So we know that whenever we have ran through the algorithm, we work it so that the final value for our y is going to equal zero. So yn is equal to zero. And we noted that we could get the angle zn by taking the initial angle and we add on the arc tan y0 upon x0. And we said that the initial value for z0 is actually a value of zero. Now, the final value for xn is going to be given by x0 squared plus y0 squared, and it's the root of that, times this value an. So let's have a little look, and we'll see where we got that from. So if we look at the first rotation, then we said that the value for our k here would be cos theta 0. So when we multiplied this length here, which is the point for the pseudo-rotation, if we multiplied that length by our cos theta zero, it would bring this point here back into the unit circle here. And then if we were to do the second rotation, then if we were multiply this length here by the cos theta zero times cos theta one, it would bring this point back into the unit circle. And so on and so forth. So I'll do one more. If we multiplied this length here with the cos theta 0 times cos theta 1 times cos theta 2, we would bring this value back in to here. So this would be our value for our k. So the value for k is going to take a length and make it shorter. So our k is a value that's less than 1. And we've seen in a previous video that as the number of iterations tends towards infinity, the value for k tends towards 0 0.6073. So if we were to leave k out of the rotation, then the final point here would be scaled by a factor of 1 upon k. This value 1 upon k is our an, and that's going to be our gain factor. So we've seen previously that the value for our k could be written in terms of the sum of the cosines, and the cosines we said, said could be written as 1 upon the root of our 1 plus 2 to the minus 2i. And we've said here that an is going to be our process gain, which is going to be the reciprocal of this. So it's 1 over k. So if we do 1 over this, we're just going to be left with this here. And our value for our x is simply going to be given by the Pythagoras. So we've got our original value for x and our original value for y. We square them, we take the square root. So in the example that we looked at, x0 was 0 0.8666 and y0 was 0 0.5. But notice as well that we also have to multiply this by that gain factor, which is, in effect, it's 1 upon the value of our k. So it's 1 upon 0.6073, so it's approximately 1.647. So I have worked through all of the nine iterations here. And remember, in the example we did, the radius here is just a value of one. So it means that if we were to zoom right to the very end, so the very last one here is this point here. And it means that the value then for this point here, you'll see is 1.647, because it's going to be the 0.866 squared plus 0.5 squared and we take the square root of it and of course we're going to get 
a value of 1 because the radius of the circle is just 1. And then we're going to multiply it by the gain factor, which is going to be 1 upon the value for our kn, uh, which is going to be 1.647. So we're simply going to have 1.647 times 1, which gives us this point here. So you can see the x distance is 1.647 and the y distance is a value of 0. So that's us looked at an example of something that is called vectoring mode. In the next video, we're going to go and look at the next chordic algorithm method, which is called the rotation mode. But we've come quite far in this video. We've got a nice standardised way of looking at the chordic algorithm. Over the next few videos, we'll expand on the algorithm and we'll see how we're able to use it to generate a whole lot more interesting functions. So thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.